Good evening. Good evening. We're glad to see you all here tonight. We trust that uh, we'll all be blessed together as we enjoy the Bob Jones University drama team. We welcome them here tonight with us as well. And uh, let's turn our celebration hymnals, please, to hymn 759, What If It Were Today, hymn 759. Let's stand and sing together. Coming to earth or God, what if it were today? Coming in power and love to reign, what if it were today? Coming to claim his chosen bride, all oh, redeemed and purified, powerless over scattered Heavenly Father, how we thank you for the great and precious promises of your word, the inerrant word of God, the guarantee that you have given to us, not only concerning our salvation, but concerning the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that you would cause each one of us to be always ready, always looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. How we thank you, Father, that your word has declared that every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. We pray, Father, for your blessings upon this service tonight. We thank you for these young people who are traveling the country to share the good news of Christ with those who are lost and to challenge those who are saved concerning the way in which we must always be looking for our Lord's return. 
We pray, Father, for your blessings upon the time tonight that each of us would be edified, encouraged, challenged, and then motivated to serve our Lord Jesus Christ more faithfully. And so, Father, we thank you for this time. We pray for your blessings upon it. And so we commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We are indeed delighted that you are with us tonight, and we trust that you will receive a blessing as the team from Bob Jones University comes and ministers. The team leader is David Massa. He'll be coming in just a moment. He'll tell you a bit about what's going on tonight, introduce the various team members, and I know that out in the lobby they have a beautiful display set up. You will want to be sure to go to the back after the service tonight and see that display. Now, Brother Massa. We're going to start our portion of the service for you all with a special music number. We will sing of Christ, and as Pastor mentioned, we hope to draw your attention to the imminent return of Jesus Christ tonight. So we'll ask you to hone in on and focus in on a particular line from the song. It comes towards the climax, when he shall come with trumpet sound. Again, we hope to encourage you to think along and meditate the lines of the future return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get into the drama, we will sing of Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. A higher plane than I have found, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. A higher plane than I have found, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. A higher plane than I have found, on Christ alone I stand. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but holy shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found. Before we get into the drama, we're just going to take a quick moment to introduce ourselves to you, allow you to get to know our real names before you get to know our stage names in just a moment when we get into the drama. So I'll start with my wife. This is Christy Massa. Christy and I have been married for about a year and a half now, so maybe still newlyweds to some, uh, veterans in marriage to others. Christy graduated with an undergraduate degree in dramatic production and then a graduate degree in performance studies, so she very much enjoys theater and drama and stage, all that good speechy stuff. She hopes to be able to use those degrees to teach speech from a Christian perspective. And this is my husband, Dave, and Dave just graduated last May with his degree in counseling. Uh, so both of us are done with school now, and that's really nice since we've done school since kindergarten. Uh, so we're enjoying the free school year now. And uh, Dave is originally from Connecticut, and he enjoys skateboarding, 
as well as juggling every now and then. <laughs> this is Elizabeth Zimmerman. She is from Columbus, Ohio. She's a junior at Bob Jones and she's studying, uh, I almost said my major. She is studying <laughs> performance studies. <laughs> and this is Jordan Alexander. He is a sophomore studying youth ministries. Jordan is from Brazil. His parents are missionaries there, and therefore he speaks three languages. He speaks Portuguese fluently and also Spanish and, of course, English. And this is Andrew Hewish. He is from Chicago, and he is a senior church music major. Being a music major, he really likes music and plays a total of six instruments. And this is Grace Pascal. Uh, Grace just finished her degree in organizational communication, and uh, she's from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Grace really likes to travel, and she's been to 46 of the 50 United States. So that's a little bit about us. As the team gets ready for the drama, I'll just inform you of a few things about Bob Jones University. Is it, a, it is a Christian liberal arts institution located in Greenville, South Carolina. It offers over 70 majors with the hope that no matter what major a student decides to study, whether in one of the sciences or, or math or, or history or Bible, whatever the case may be, that, that the goal for that student is that they would find and see Christ in that major. So that when the student does leave Bob Jones University, uh, they can go out into an unbelieving world and be salt and light and be a help and an aid to the local church in its mission to evangelize the lost and edify believers. If you have any questions about BJU or what it stands for, uh, please feel free to pull one of us aside after the service and ask us anything you'd like about BJU or its stances on anything. Or see one of us at the table afterwards. There are also some CDs and DVDs for sale at the table with some good Christian music and videos there. If you think those might be helpful or edifying to you and your family, please see one of us at the table afterwards in the back. We'd love to get those into your hands. Um, there will be a love offering at the end of the service, and I just want to say thank you in advance for anything you give. It goes towards defraying the cost of what it takes specifically for the six of us to travel around the Mid-Atlantic. So at the love offering at the end, just want to say thank you in advance for anything that you might give. We, we appreciate it, and it helps a lot. Thank you. All right, I believe the team is just about ready, so we will go ahead and jump right into our drama. start and reboot my, my entire life. Yeah, there, there, must be, there must be others who, who know something about, about what just happened. Uh, let's see. Um, my status today is different from any status I ever posted. The world has changed just now, in so fundamental a way, I don't even know what to text. All right, send that to my entire friend group. All right, somebody's got to be able to message back from, from wherever they are. Come on, did, did someone reply already? But yeah, turn. Tell them where you are. Uh, let's see. Tonight, tonight was the rehearsal for my wedding. I'm marrying, was marrying, Karis Atkins. She's the daughter of the pastor of Gospel Light Church, Pastor Atkins. She's, she's not here now. She's gone. They're all gone. Wait, 
Yeah, tell, uh, t- tell about the sermon. Uh, two weeks ago, Pastor Atkins preached a sermon. I remember the verse he preached on was... Was... Uh, oh, what was that verse? It was the... Uh, oh, come on, I know this. It's that one about the... Uh, how's it go? Uh, something like a, a, a blinking of an eye? or the, Oh, yeah. In the twinkling of an eye. Pastor Atkins titled his Sunday morning sermon An Instant Message from Jesus. And wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Thank you. You may be seated. We usually sing that song at Christmas time, but had you ever noticed the final words of this song? This song is about the second coming of Jesus. He rules the world with truth and grace. When will Jesus rule the world? Has he come to rule the world yet? No, but today might be that day. The subject of my sermon is, Instant Message from Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. You might say we shall not all die. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Instant Message from Jesus. We live in an age that is dominated not merely by what is rapid or even lightning fast. We are dominated by the instant. Want instant information on any subject in the universe? Where would you go to for that? Someone answer me. Google. Google. If you want instant access to your friends' lives, where would you go for that? Facebook. And of course, instant messages. How many of you have texted, tweeted, or even used your computer this weekend? Myself included. Of all places in scripture, this passage makes me think of the instant messages we know so well in the 21st century. Paul makes clear that in one instant, Jesus will send the most significant message this world has received in 2,000 years. What's the content of that message? In this one moment, Jesus will reveal that the gospel, the good news, it is true. His promise to return and take those who trust in Christ to be with Him, it was real. Paul had no knowledge of the instant age in which we live, but under inspiration, he found an image that even startles us. Even people accustomed to seeing things instantaneously. So my question is simple. Do you really believe that at any moment, everything you've ever known could be gone? So anyway, I wasn't at church, but I was at the coffee shop where I worked, and my phone migrates. Now, I'm not allowed to text at work, and anyone who cares is allowed to text at church, but I've gotten where I'm pretty active with him in the comment. Hey there, beloved barista, how's your morning? verse 18. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now we're planning a wedding in our home and there's no secret there. But I've often thought, could Jesus return before the big day? I know my daughter certainly hopes not. But I've often said that we should plan our lives as though He weren't coming back for a thousand years. But live our lives as though He were coming back today. So my question to you this morning is simple. Have you put your trust in the gospel? Are you living each day aware of the gospel? What exactly is the gospel? Sorry I missed the worship service. I, I had to work at the coffee shop, so... No, that's sorry. okay. I'm glad you dropped by. Do you have a moment while I go print off those vows in my office? Well, yes, sir. Well, thank you. Kale, are you sure you're up to memorizing all those vows for the wedding? I'm up to anything, if it makes the wedding as perfect as possible for you. <laughs> have I told you how much I love you? Oh, you two kill me, and oh, I so love to hear it when a groom says he wants to make everything perfect. That's exactly what a wedding planner dreams of. Rachel, you're not just the wedding planner. You're the absolute best maid of honor a girl ever had. <laughs> well, that's why it has to be double perfect, and I am getting so nervous I could scream. <laughs> oh, uh, Kale, can yeah. Harris and I play you the wedding solo we found? Oh, yeah. We think it's perfect, but we'd like to know what you think. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Go, go right ahead. Uh, Kale, I'll just play the first verse, and she can sing it for you, okay? Yeah, and you know, you know I'm all ears, Karis, but... Uh, you know, my, my taste in music might not be the same as, as yours and, and Rachel's. Well, I want to know what you think. Okay, here we go. His robes for mine, oh wonderful exchange. Clothed in my sin, Christ suffered neath God's rage. Draped in his righteousness, I'm just in It sounds fine, Karis. Uh, yeah, the, um, it sounded great, and I, I really liked it a lot. Did Kale choose it? No, I chose it myself. 
I still think we should stick with songs that everyone will know. Mom, if we only sing songs that people already know, they're not going to have a chance to learn a new one that can be edifying, too. Let's not talk about it anymore. Your dad and I are coming back to the church after lunch to run vows with you and Kale. Maybe we can talk about it then, okay? Rachel, your voice is just beautiful, and I am so glad you're helping plan all these wedding details. We couldn't do it without you. And I'm sure whatever we choose will just be lovely. Now, I'll see you girls later. Man, I really wanted to use this. I know. Perfect. Me too. But I'm sure there's something else in this book we can use. It won't be a problem. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, Karis, I was... What's up? Well, I don't want to pry or anything, but... Uh, okay, this might sound weird, but... Well, you trust Kale, right? Trust Kale about what? Okay, I'll just ask. I don't know him like you do, which is why I can only see what he likes on Facebook. But what do you think about some of the songs and movies on his likes? You have a problem with Kale because of something he put on his Facebook? It's amazing. When somebody says your name, wherever you are, you hear it crystal clear. After I got the gospel, Well, it's just that you've only known him for a year, maybe a year and a half, and sometimes it just doesn't seem like he cares about the Lord. Okay, let me ask you this. Did my dad put you up to this? No, of course not. Then what makes you creep around and stop what Kale likes on Facebook? No, it's not like that. It's not easy to put into words. It's just a feeling. He only moved here after college, and we don't see him at church that often. I hardly know him. Okay, look... He and I were together at college for nine months, and, and you were here when he walked down the aisle and joined our church. I mean, if he didn't have to work 50 hours a week, he would be here every single Sunday. Well, but it's not just his Facebook. It's that it all just seems like a big joke to him. What does? Well, just everything. Oh, like I saw him at work the other day, and I just asked him if he ever gets chances to tell his friends about the Lord while he's there, and he just said, huh, yeah, right. He acted like I was really stupid for asking. Well, that's not what he's being paid to do. Well, I know, and I agree, but to blow me off so sarcastically? Oh, and that drinking party at Nate's house? Rachel. Karis, Nate is his best friend. I just don't know who Kale is. No, you don't. Look, let's not fight. I know you, and if you know for yourself about his walk with the Lord, that's great. I trust you. And if you trust him, that's all that matters. I just want what's best for you, because marriage is for keeps. I know! Okay, look, I just think you're too worried about this whole thing. He doesn't joke around all the time. We've had some good, serious talks, and when his work schedule calms down, he'll come to church more often, and, and you'll feel better about this whole thing. Well, okay, I trust you. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. <laughs> it's fine. Am I still your maid of honor? Don't be silly. You're the best friend I have. Oh, thanks. Uh, sorry, but uh, who's the best friend you have? Well, were you eavesdropping? Oh, no. Well, why? I, well, I'm not interrupting anything here, am I? No. Um, hey, do you have the dress fabric that you oh, can show him? You all really want to know what I think about a dress color? Well, it's for the wedding. <laughs> all right, fine. Um, that looks, yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, you know, Rachel, with Nate's boot in here... You two will be a perfect pal. Oh, uh, well, when will I get to meet Nate? Uh, I guess not until the wedding rehearsal. Oh, but you know, you could probably find out something about him if you wanted, you know, by checking out his Facebook profile, you know, on my friends. Oh, uh, well, you should bring him to church sometime. <laughs> Nate? No, 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 no. Not Nate. I wasn't going to tell her, but my friend Nate dropped dead before he ever steps foot into a church. He resents religion, all religion. I wonder if he'll feel any differently now that, well, now that all this has happened. Hey, look, Karis, are you ready to go eat? I'm getting really yeah, hungry. Yeah, I'm ready. Well, I'll see you two later. Thanks, Rachel. Um, Kale, what did you think about Dad's sermon today? It was pretty good. You know, well, the parts I could hear through my earphone.
how true and complete God's grace is. You don't want to live for yourself. You want to live for Him. Oh, I get it. So, I earn my own salvation by obeying all the rules. Well, you know, at least all, all the rules that the church sets up, right? Yeah, stop. No one earns their salvation. No one's good enough. And you know that and already. I don't understand why certain songs and movies are such a big deal. Karis, look, Karis, if Jesus were around today... Do you think Jesus would be hypersensitive about like my Facebook and movie standards or whatever? Maybe, maybe you've lived under the oppression for so long, you don't know how brainwashed that all sounds to an outsider. Oh, are you an outsider now? No, Karis, you know what I mean. It's just we just spent all Sunday afternoon quibbling over whether my Facebook likes are borderline or not when we could have been doing something fun. Karis, I... I just can't wait till we get married so that we can decide for ourselves. Decide you know, what, what? Well, what we like and what we don't like. Not because of, you know, what someone else thinks, but, but because we know each other. And we trust each other. We won't have to worry about whether other people think that we're messing up. What about when we do mess up? I don't know, Karis, okay? We'll, we'll figure that out when we get there, all right? I used to think when I messed up, God would just punish me on the spot. Yeah. Well, don't you get it? That, that's exactly how all these rules make you feel. No, no, that was my fault. I was living as though God's favor depended on me and what I did. I thought that God would smile at me if I was good, and he would frown at me until I got back in line, and that was so wrong. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, because even on the best day of my life, I can't earn my salvation it, it wasn't until I trusted in Jesus Christ to save me from my sins. And he did, but not because of anything I did or ever could do, but because of his grace. And that's so liberating. And obviously, I still feel bad when I mess up, but I just confess my sins because he already paid for it, and I move on. Do you ever confess your sins? Oh, Karis, I, I, I do confess my sins, and, and look, I... I don't want to be stubborn, and I... Well, I certainly don't want everyone worrying about me, so... So look, if it, if it makes everyone feel better, I'll clean up my Facebook page, okay? No, okay, this is not about Facebook. Do you or do you not want to please God with a decision as basic as that? I think I do. Do what? Want to clean up my Facebook page, you know, and be more conservative. And No, Karis, sure look, this church just... is a big part of your life. I want to be a big part of your life. It just makes sense. Yeah, well, I'll clean up my Facebook page and I don't want you to worry about it, okay? I, I do want you to tell me about something else, though. Do you really believe that, well, like your dad was preaching earlier today, the entire church is literally going to, like, <coughs> disappear? Kale, <Kale, laughs> don't make fun of that. No, 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 really, really, think about that. That's gross. Why? All right, all right, listen. Dead bodies, right? Dead bodies that have been buried popping up out of the ground like Night of the Living Dead. Kale. Kale, you're so weird. Stop. <laughs> you believe that? Yes, it's in the Bible. I don't think about it a whole lot, but I believe it. And what do you think about a lot? I don't know. That is a pretty ring, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not bad for cubic zirconium. Oh, all right. Then give it back. No, stop. Yep. Kale, <laughs> stop trying to take out my <laughs> Mother and I would like to talk with you two. Okay. It's important. Your father has something to say to both of you. Why don't you two have a seat? <laughs> Karis, your mother and I have been talking about the wedding, and, and Kale, we talked to you last summer before you two got engaged. We'd known you for what? About a year and a half, and we talked in depth about your walk with the Lord and how you accepted him. And we believed you when you said you're Christian. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. I, I came down the aisle and I, I joined the church when I got here. I, I'm as Christian as I can be. That's what I told you every time. I call myself Christian many times. I still call myself a Christian, but after the rest of them are gone, I don't know. Yes, Dale, but making a public profession of faith and living a life committed to Christ are two completely different things. Now, you know I don't think works can save anyone. It's all Christ, and it's all His grace. But when a man has tasted that grace, his life is bound to be different than the way it was before. Now, 
Mrs. Atkins and I feel that you two need more time to get together. Dad, don't put the wedding off. Just so we can get better acquainted. Kale, we really do like you. And we did believe you when you said you were Christian. But frankly, we haven't seen much growth in life since that time. Mrs. Agnes, Pastor Atkins, I think I know where you're going with all this. And, and I, I want you to know that, that Karis and I were talking about this kind of thing earlier today. Pastor Atkins, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. You know, start fresh. And well, well, my, my Facebook page, it's, it's got some things on there that really shouldn't be. So I'm, I'm going to take them off. And it's because I, I want... Kale, are you sure? No, look, Karis... Uh, you all know I haven't been a Christian for that long. I mean, I've been to church my, my whole life and said I was a Christian for, for years, but but I, I never heard preaching like you preach it till I started to come here, Pastor Atkins. Well, Karis and I were talking about the sermon you preached earlier today. I want to live like the Christian I professed to be and, and be ready for the Lord's return. And I... I well, I, I would like you to pray with me, Pastor Atkins. Well, if, if you would... It's good to hear you say that, Kale. Oh, is that, is that what this big talk was, was all about? We just want God's will for both of you. Kale, you can make some kind of outward change in your own strength, but that's not what we would want. You can't change because of us, or because of cares, or because of anything else, but that because you, yourself, have put your trust in Jesus Christ and have given everything to Him. Is that your heart's desire? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, it Kale, is. are you sure? Look, Karis, because... I really mean all of this, okay? Look, I really want to live like the Christian I profess to be. I, I really mean all of it. I, I, I mean it from my heart. But I did not. I knew that the day in Karis, she never doubted my word. I played the part perfectly. It's all an act. They believed me. I was, I was lying. I lied to them. I wish. disappear off the face of the earth. All right. Two people are going to be walking along the road together, right? All of a sudden, one of them is going to be gone. All right. A man and his wife are going to go to sleep together at night. One of them is going to wake up alone. It's like thousands of people Wait a are literally just going to disappear. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. These people actually think that they're going to disappear? What are they? Crazies or something? No, no, no. It's, it's not like that, right? It, it's a normal church. Normal? normal? Yeah. Dude, these people think they're going to fly away any time now. You call that normal? No, it's, it's not like they claim to know when it's going to happen. Only that will happen. I mean, it, it could be a thousand years from now. It, it could be, you know, it, it could, could be uh, tomorrow. And uh, what's going to happen to the rest of us? We just stand here and watch them go or wave goodbye or what? No, you don't want to hear what's going to happen to the rest of us. What? All right, fine. Uh, you remember that story of Moses and Pharaoh? Egypt, right? Well, there's going to be plagues. Plagues and stuff like that for like seven years. And then at the end of the seven years, there's a... Well, that part gets kind of confusing. But anyway, we're all going to have to face the final judgment of God. And that before a big white throne in heaven. <laughs> and Karis believes all this? I don't know. She oh, says she does. That's incredible. Are you sure you want to marry her? Look, Karis is not as hyper as the rest of really? her, right? Yeah. Really? Well, then, uh, why don't you ask me this question? If they, uh, they really believe that all this is going to happen, then, uh, why aren't they out warning the rest of us? I mean, I never heard about it before, and well, I doubt if anybody else has either. Well, I don't, I don't know. It's a, uh, that's a pretty good question, though. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, anyway, get this, all right. After the service, Karis' parents to come in and talk to us. Real serious. All right. Her dad basically says he wants to postpone the wedding because they're not sure about me. Karis obviously got all upset, so I told him what I normally do. 
I'll rededicate my life to God and clean up my stuff and blah, blah, blah. So they calm down. It's cool. And me and Karis, me and Karis are going to live happily ever after. You did? You did all that for her? You're worse off than I thought. So what, you're just going to fly away with the rest of them and leave me here? Thanks a lot, pal. You're welcome. So, okay, look, I want you to make out a will so that when you fly away, at least I'll get all your stuff. That way I'll at least have some money to buy groceries during the plagues. I mean, you wouldn't want me to starve now, would you? Nate, the way you go through groceries, you'd starve anyway. Besides, Karis' dad said a loaf of bread is going to cost an entire bag of gold. So, But I thought you said you didn't believe any of that stuff. I don't. Gives me the creeps talking about this kind of thing. Come on, let's get out of here.
So, that's what I know about all this. Would someone please reply already? What was that song, dear? The song, it was a song for the wedding, dear. How'd it go? I cling to Christ and marvel at the cost. Jesus forsaken, God estranged from God, bought by such love. My life is not my own. My life, my life has always been my own. Oh. I was, I was never bought by that love. I, I, I never, I never said yes in my heart. It's just like that, that verse. How's that Bible verse go? Uh, Many will say to me in that day, Lord. Lord! What's, what's the end of that verse? It was a... Lord! I, I don't remember. I... I can't remember. So that's Kale's story. What we've seen dramatized this evening are a number of different characters on stage, all with different expectations leading up to, and then reactions to, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So whether or not you related personally with any of the characters on stage, I think the drama asks us all one very important question. And that question is, 
Am I living in light of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? And for the believers, for believers, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ is our glorious and blessed hope. We long for the day when Christ returns, catches up his bride unto himself, and we will all with one voice worship our Savior and Redeemer face to face for all eternity. But are we living today as if we are going to have to give an account to him one day for how we lived today? Are we working, watching, and waiting for his return? Is there anything in our lives that we will be ashamed of when he returns? If so, believer, the Bible tells us that he that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Believer, are you living in light of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Unbeliever, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ is the blessed and glorious hope of every believer, but it is also a terror to unbelievers, as you saw as it was for Kale tonight. So my question to you tonight is, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and accepted what He accomplished for you on the cross, and when He rose again, and when He returns, because He will return, He has promised to return, and He will keep that promise. Have you accepted what Jesus Christ has done for you, so that when He does return, you may be able to say, with all those who have accepted Christ, that when He does return, you will be among His people, among His bride, that will worship and adore their Creator and Savior and Redeemer face to face for all, re for all eternity. Whether or not you have accepted Jesus Christ tonight as Savior, or if we have and we are believers and are looking for that day, are we living in light of the truth of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Pastor. Team from Bob Jones, we thank you very much for being with us tonight. An excellent drama, but more importantly, the truth that was expressed here tonight. There are only two places that you will go in eternity. Either you will go to heaven, or you will go to hell. There is no other option. The Bible tells us it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. But perhaps the rapture will take place tonight, and it will be a very similar situation to which you have just seen here on the stage. There will be many who are gone. There will be millions who are left behind because they have hardened their hearts to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not according to our works that we're saved. The scripture makes that very clear. It's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, or if you think you're trusting Christ plus your good works, you are hopelessly lost. It is only when you trust in him alone that God freely and generously and with great love gives you that gift, that gift of eternal life. If you're visiting with us tonight and have not made that decision, we encourage you to do so before you leave this place. It's not hard. It's not intellectually challenging. It's not something that you have to ponder about. You merely trust Christ to have paid for your sins, to be buried, and then, as the Word of God clearly declares, he rose from the dead 
the third day, guaranteeing that his offer of eternal life is true. Make sure before you leave this place that you have trusted in Christ alone. But the other message that was given to us tonight was for us who are Christians, those who know they're on their way to heaven, those who have the absolute assurance given by the Spirit of God that we are born again. And that challenge is, as was expressed as Nate and Kale were talking in the car, well, I never heard that before. Probably not very many people believe that. You see, we often as Christians fail to give the testimony that we're supposed to give. The Apostle Paul put it this way, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Christian brother or sister, are you living for Christ? Are your thoughts focused on eternity and your speech and your actions corresponding by the way in which you speak to others and live before them? It's convicting for us. Oh, that God would motivate each one of us in the power of the Spirit of God to be bold in our faith and on our witness to those who have not heard. For the time is short. As John prayed at the end of the book of Revelation, even so, come, Lord Jesus. We're going to bow for a moment of prayer, then we'll take an offering. These young people are on the road by faith, and by the grace of God, we trust that they will have a wonderful, blessed, and safe journey. Let's pray for them now, and then I'll ask the uh, two young men who were up here a moment ago to come and distribute the envelopes. Anything that occurs in a yellow envelope like this will go to the Bob Jones University drama team. If you want to put cash in it, that cash will be counted and a check corresponding will be written out to them. If you wish to make out a check for the team, be sure to make it out to Bob Jones University and that can also be put in the envelope. So now let's join together in a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, how we thank you once again for the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is supernatural. And you have promised in your word that your word will not return unto you void, but that it will accomplish that which you please, and that it will prosper in the thing whereto you have sent it. We pray, Father, that you will take your word and use it in a powerful way tonight in the hearts of all those who are here present. For those who do not yet know the Savior, that tonight would be the day of their new birth. That they would trust in Jesus alone, the one who loved them and bought them with his blood. For those of us who are saved, that we would be challenged and motivated, yea, even convicted of our sin, of failing to share the good news of Christ with others. Make us diligent, make us faithful, make us consistent, make us men and women of wisdom, so that we will know exactly what to say to each person with whom we come in contact. Father, we thank you for bringing us here tonight. It is your sovereign goodness that has allowed us to be in this place with health and breath and strength. You are the one who motivated us to come here tonight. We worship before you the living God. We pray that this evening will be well remembered in each of our hearts and minds and that we will act upon the basis of the truth presented for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if Andrew and Jordan would come forward for a moment, and we have the yellow envelopes. I'll ask each of them to give one to each of you all. And we encourage you to give very generously, because the money that is taken in in the offerings goes to help this team on the road. It helps pay for their gas, helps pay for their food, and also helps them with their tuition. They're on staff as they are going around right now, so uh, they will be receiving from the university and through these offerings 
uh, help with their tuition. So please give generously. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. And we are delighted that these young people have taken an entire semester off to come and share these dramas all over the East Coast. I understand that they are busy every day of the week except Saturday they have the day off, but they do morning worship services, they do evening worship services. During the week they go to various schools and make these presentations, and then they have churches in the evenings on, I believe it's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So they are very busy, and they certainly could use your generous gifts to them, and we encourage you to do so. Now as our ushers come forward, we'll receive our evening gifts and offerings. And as they are coming, remember, those things that are in the envelope, all of that goes to the team. Everything outside of that, uh, if it's loose in the plate or in a different kind of envelope, is the evening offering for the church. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving. And Father, it is actually an act of worship. We understand that because we are demonstrating what we think of your worth as we give. We thank you, Father, that all that we have and all that we are has been a gracious gift from your hand. We have nothing that did not ultimately come from you. And so as we give, Father, we give you gracious thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you very much, Andrew. Let's uh, sing one final hymn, have the benediction, and then we invite you out to the lobby to see all of the display that the team has there. You'll get to meet them personally and uh, thank them. Please do thank them for 
what they have done for us tonight. 753 in the bright green hymnals, the celebration hymnal, 753, Jesus is coming again. And let's stand to sing, 753. Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, wonderful word of the King, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, it may be soon, coming again, coming again, oh what a wonderful day it will be, Jesus is coming again, forest and flower exclaim, mountain and meadow the same, earth and heaven proclaim, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, it may be soon, coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Standing before him at last, trial and trouble will pass. Crowns at his feet we will cast. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Coming again. soon, coming again, coming again, oh what a wonderful day it will be, Jesus is coming again. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and ever. Amen.